Hello again, I am Blunty. In a video earlier this week, I explored and reviewed a few new accessories for these, the Rode Wireless Go, a wireless microphone solution that I really quite am impressed by. And I was impressed by the accessories, most notably uh, this, which is the Rode Interview Go. And uh, this is basically not much more than an old plastic stick that the microphone portion of the pairing slides into. And then, you know, becomes a, an interview style stick mic. But in that video, I also exclaimed my surprise and disappointment that this, which is, you know, nothing more than an stick of plastic and blob of foam, uh, and they're charging 30 of Emperor Trump's currency units for this. That seemed to me pretty overpriced. But at the same time, if you are trying to present as professional, uh, it is extremely well built and it feels great and everything. So it might be worth investing in that anyway. It's going to last you a lifetime. There's no electronics to go wrong. It's extremely well built. And, you know, there are ways to justify the pricing. But I did also conjecture in that video that it might just be easier and far cheaper to 3D print your own. It's just a bit of plastic with a special little gap at the top there for the road to slide into. So that is what we're doing today. And in fact, that's what I did. And I'm going to tell you all about it because what I found was really rather interesting and sort of changed my mind on the value proposition that this represents. It was an adventure, but an interesting one. Let me take you through it. But before I take you through it, this is the part of the video where I have to stop telling you the story of the actual video and set aside a little chunk of time to breathlessly beg you to join me in the fight against the monstrous evil robotic overlord that is the YouTube algorithm that keeps trying to suppress us all. I need you to hit that subscribe, hit the bell, do the thumb, leave a comment, share the video, all the things I'm supposed to ask you to do. I don't think it makes that much of a difference, to be honest with you. But I keep being told I have to do it, so I do it. Might make a difference. Who knows? Only you can make a difference by doing the things. <laughs> I'm not sure what all that was. The things, you know. So if you do find this video anything remotely to or adjacent of entertaining, interesting, or or or, or just useful, uh, please do the things, Julie. So it turns out a Thingiverse user by the name of Joe Carnine already made a model for exactly this purpose, published a few days after Rode originally announced their own adapter, and very obviously directly inspired by it. So, perfect for my needs. And thank the maker lords for John, because feck knows I know sweet bugger all about 3D modeling. 3D printing I'm relatively to grips with. Not an expert, but you know, I know what I'm doing enough to get myself out of trouble. But 3D modeling itself, okay, I got no idea. But it seems Joe himself has never even printed the whole thing, uh, just the top bit to test fit the Rode Wireless Go. And, and with no other makers listed, I just might be the first person to print this in full. Unfortunately for me, my janky, but thus far wholly reliable ANET A8 DIY build-it-yourself printer that I did back in 2017, I think. I made a video about it back then. It was pretty impressive, but it wasn't amazing. It was very cheap and it was a build-it-yourself kind of thing and, you know, exposed wires everywhere, so it seemed kind of dangerous at times, but it printed well and consistently and every single time. But when I plugged that in yesterday after uh, sitting on a shelf for, I don't know, probably about a year ago since the last time I used it, uh, I, I released the Magic Blue Smoke. The Magic Blue Smoke, as we all know, is factory installed and if released to the atmosphere, prevents all electronics from working. My printer is dead. I had a fallback though. That thing back there. That is an easy 3 nano. But it was sent to me for a review. Again, I think about a year or so ago, but I never actually produced a review for it because I never got anything useful from it. I could not recommend it under any circumstances. It's not good for educational use. It's not good for beginners. It's not good for anybody because it's shite. But it is the only working 3D printer I have in the lair. So, gave it a go. And it took me seven hours of fiddling yesterday. This whole project was supposed to be like a five hour thing find the file, print it out, test it out, make a video of my impressions, job done, one day video, easy. No, 
Seven, I got real stubborn yesterday trying to get this thing to work. Seven hours of fiddling and changing settings one by one and up and down a little bit. And, and, and just, it was driving me absolutely insane. So many fouled prints, so many miseries, two different kinds of, 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 of material going through it. And it just, ah! But eventually I found a combination of settings that got this thing to mostly work. It was relatively consistent. The prints looked like shit, but at least they were printing in the shape they were supposed to be printing in. So that was progress. Unfortunately, again, the other issue with this thing is uh, it's got a teeny tiny build volume. Uh, and so printing something like that is, was just out of the question. So I had to jump into Mesh Mixer, which is a program a lot of makers use to slice up models to accommodate smaller build volumes and things like that. So I had to slice it into three different bits. So I just sliced through the handle. Relatively easy, even for an absolute beginner. Mesh Mixer's UI is catastrophically annoying and really dumb, but you can sort of muddle through it as a beginner and get some basic slicing done if you need to, which is what I did. So thoroughly exhausted by the whole experience so far, I got the print file, I put it into Mesh Mixer, I sliced it up, I saved it out again, I pulled it into Cura, which is the slicing program. That's, for those of you not knowing about 3D printing, that's a program that makes the makes little slices of the model, tells the printer how to build the thing level by level, basically. Uh, so I did that, squirted it onto a, onto a SD card, micro SD card and popped it in the machine and let it run. Kira said the print was going to take four hours. It was 11 p.m. at this point, so I thought, no problem. I'll just pop it in. I'll, I'll just, you know, watch some Battlestar Galactica and fall asleep. And by the time I wake up, it'll be done. And it won't be going all night long, so I won't have that gzz, 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 uh, noise. It's not particularly a dial printer. That's one, of the, that's one of the nice things about it. It's relatively quiet. But I thought it won't be going all night, so it won't disturb my sleep necessarily uh, any more than my sleep is normally disturbed. When I woke up, it was still going. Turns out the actual print time, uh, because that is the other, other, other issue with this particular printer, it is catastrophically slow. If you thought four hours for that print was slow, <laughs> no, try eight. That's ridiculous. So my terrible easy 3 nano printer, catastrophically slow, teeny tiny build volume and bad results. We finally got a result and it printed complete. There were no mistakes. It looks terrible. The surface is all kinds of wibbly, but it was good enough to finally just test out to see if this thing would work. Total time on this project was now at 15 hours, by the way, up from the five I had originally estimated. But print finally done, now comes the post process. Seems amount of sandpaper. Not exactly sure how I managed to let that happen. I was sure I had some left. There might be some around here somewhere, but it's not where I expected it to be. So I had to make do with what I had because popping out to the hardware store under current global conditions, I didn't consider that essential travel uh, just for this stupid little project. So I made do with what I had on hand. I had some Brasso in the cupboard last used, many years ago when I was uh, uh, fixing up a 60-year-old Soviet lens. I gave up rather quickly, though. Brasso can work to smooth out PLA prints, uh, but you really do want to have a better starting point than I was dealing with. Uh, you want to either sand it first or have a printer that isn't complete trash. So I grabbed my file and I smoothed off the flat edges that would make together, just smooth enough so the glue would actually hold good enough to get the job done. And voila, finished print. It's it's not the greatest 3D print you'll ever see, but it's straight-ish and it's holding together pretty well. Uh, and it does, in fact, where's the microphone one? It does, in fact, fit the microphone. It's a bit of a tight fit because between PLA's propensity to shrink slightly as it cools down from the printing process and that printer's uh, rather sloppy tolerances, uh, <laughs> But it fits good enough to actually test this thing. And this is where I started finding out uh, something interesting about Rhodes product. And of course, you know, this thing is designed to fit over that. So of course, this works on this as well, by the way. Um, you know what? Let me start and stop the recording and let you see what this sounds like from here on in. Or maybe I won't, because in trying to pull this thing out far enough to get at the power uh, button which is on the bottom I managed to snap the print so the layer adhesion not what you'd call ideal uh, let me just glue that together and I'll be back with you in another 15 minutes or so I guess for you it'll be a blink of an eye but for me it's just adding more and more time to this build I'm, I'm filled with regrets regrets and misery I hate that printer so much 
Now, obviously, this can't possibly change the way this microphone sounds, but it does change something that I didn't think about when I was looking at this originally, and it's the weight of it. This thing is a lot heavier than I ever noticed uh, when I was originally reviewing it. It wasn't until I printed this that I realized how heavy this actually is. And it's very deliberately so, so it feels better in the hand. It feels better balanced in the hand because with this, uh, because this is printed almost hollow, it's got like a 10% infill in there. Um, it's very, very top heavy. So it makes it feel weird doing that. It doesn't feel balanced in the hand properly. Uh, whereas this feels extremely well balanced when you're doing that sort of stuff. So that's one difference. The other difference is, you might notice that is a very uh, small cross section. Uh, and I did lament that in my original review in that it wouldn't fit in, what have I done with it? Uh, regular microphone clips. This one actually does. Uh, I'm not going to do it now because as I've just demonstrated, my print is fairly fragile and this is a pretty deliberately tight fitting thing. But actually, you know what? Hang on. Just do the end. Uh, so yeah, you can uh, now use uh, the Rode Wireless Go in regular mic stands. Now, I'm never really one for having my microphone in frame if I can at all avoid it, but just as proof of concept that the 3D printed handle thing fits in a regular microphone clip and can therefore make this useful in more situations than this would be if you don't happen to have one of those little clampy things I was showing in the other video. Ta-da! Proof of concept, I guess. But it is a perfectly functional uh, and, and practical uh, replacement or alternative to Rhodes' official thing. But this whole experiment has rather convinced me that this is actually worth the money. The build quality in this, uh, sort of the feel and the professionalism of this uh, versus how much work it took to get even this. I mean, I do. If, if, I, if I did have a decent printer, it would have taken a lot less time. Let's be frank about that. But uh, not everyone has a 3D printer or has a friend with a 3D printer. But all of this you know, experimentation has convinced me that this in fact, is worth the asking price. Uh, like I said in the original review, it is incredibly well built. It's going to last you a lifetime. You can sort of, I, I can't imagine what you would have to put this through to damage it in any meaningful way. Uh, it does really feel that solid. I mean, maybe the, the, the you know, the, the plastic in the receptacle there would eventually wear out if you put the microphone in and out of it enough times. Uh, but, you know, that's years and years and years of regular use before that even happens. Uh, whereas with this, uh, a lot less robust, but then again, I could replace it uh, in, well, as it turns out, about eight hours worth of printing and another couple of hours worth of preparation and stuff. So at the end of the day, if I managed to lose this, uh, I would pay for another one. I've got no qualms about the price anymore. That also said, uh, when and if I do get a good 3D printer again, uh, I will be printing another one of these because just the, the fact that this fits in a regular microphone clamp uh, is, is really quite useful to have around anyway. And by the way, I did also print up a few smaller related accessories to this as well. Uh, these were some of my test prints because they were much smaller to do before I started printing this thing in the hope it wouldn't bugger up. Uh, so yeah, make sure you stay tuned, subscribe, do the bell, the whole thing uh, to make sure you don't miss out on that because these are really quite useful as well. Meanwhile, I am Blunty. Thanks for watching. I will catch you next time. And a special thank you, of course, to the patrons up above, as always. You, those guys are amazing and special and, and golden and beautiful and unique and trophy award-winning specialists in keeping the uh, uh, smile on my face.